of this number, 64, is greater than or equal to the 79, which we're pulling, that's represented here, then I want you to take P of X. If not, double quotes, which is just a blank space. And that means that down to here, you can see at 79 and above, it's given me these numbers. And you can see that that is given me then this orange spot at the, at the cross. Now, because we don't have a lot of data, it's a little bit less than smooth. Right? If we had more data, then it would be more smooth of a line, but you can see it's basically right there. And we have the, the side to the top uh, being greater than the, the, 70, the 79. So that is that one. So then I can go and say, okay, well, what if we're asking a question to have P of X less than or equal to this time 76 instead of 79? So we could once again make a dynamic type of label putting an equal sign before the P, the quotes around all the text from P to the equal sign, tying it together with an and to the number, in this case 76, and then tying that together with an and to the text under the quotes of a closing bracket, which allows you to change this number, which will automatically change that number. So then in order to calculate this, it's just going to be simply the norm dot dist of the X 76, the mean and standard deviation 73.7, 2.3. And then is it going to be cumulative? Yes, this is going to be cumulative. Now, if I was to graph that and look at it pictorially, this is P of X less than or equal to 76. The formula then is going to be a logical test if the logic test is that this x is greater than or equal to 76 then is the comma then what do you want it to do pick up the p of x if not that's the second comma what do you want it to do leave it blank represented by quotes because text with nothing in the middle quotes are the text with nothing in the middle so you can see if i go down here it stops then at the 76 so if i was to graph this on top of what we had in our normal bell curve now you have the orange side being this side so now you, the orange represents the area under the curve from here i think 70 is right there it's a little bit crooked because of the data being jagged because we don't have as much data but you get the idea of the orange being uh, the area under the curve on that side you get the pictorial representation now of course the next thing we might do is well what if it's in the middle how are we going to graph that then? Well, the next question we have, we have uh, uh, P of X is less than 76. Didn't I already do this? So, so we said, oh, we can also say that this is going to be one minus uh, the, the other bit if it was the inverse. So I won't go into that here. We're going to say, now what if it's in between? So now I want it to be in between 72 274, which might look something like this. P of X is X. I like to write it this way. This might not be the X is greater than the equal to 72 and it's less than or equal to uh, 74. If I do the formula for that, we have to do two cumulatives because if I look at it pictorially, it would look something like this. We're going to say that I want this bit in the middle, but the cumulative function only works that it goes from left to right. So what I have to do is say, I'm going to take the cumulative up to the high point minus the cumulative up to the low point, And that will leave me with the middle bit. So it would be if I, if I did the first bit, it would be all orange up to here minus this first blue bit taking out that first blue. So it lo the formula looks like this. It's going to be norm dot dist. And then we've got the X on the upper X, 74, the mean standard deviation are the same that they were before. It has to be cumulative represented by a one minus norm dot dist with the lower mean, the 72 in this case, same, uh, the lower X, 72, same mean, same standard deviation. And it also cumulative will, will, give, us, will give us that 32, 15, the area under the curve. Now, if I go up, here and take a look at it we have our dynamic header up top this is another if then function that we could make this one which would be if and notice i have to have an and because there's two conditions now i'm combining an if and an and 
uh, this is one way that we can do this, right? I can say, well, if, and then, and, the logic text is that this number x over here, x is greater than or equal to the uh, 72 comma, and then it's uh, x is less than or equal to the 74, closing up the and function, then what we want you to do is pick up the p of x. We want you to pick up the p of x. And if it's not true, then we want the double quotes. So it looks a little complicated. If you practice it a few times, not too bad. So now it's picking up these ones right here is the only ones where we have our, our information from 72 to uh, 74. And so then I could plot that. That's one way we can basically plot this. You can imagine doing this a couple different ways, but we can plot it that way and you get the amount in the middle. Now note this kind of indicates that every time we we work something like this, we have to do multiple graphs to get a visual representation. And remember that you don't necessarily have to do that because you could, I mean, you could use like a normal a normal graph like this and still get an idea of what is happening with a bar chart. Or you could use an area chart with just one of these separations and then change that point from the high point to the low point so you get a pictorial idea of what is happening when we're doing the, the cumulative up to here and then the cumulative up to here. Uh, so, so there's various ways that you can make your graphs so that you can, the point usually of the graph is to understand what you're doing in the calculations. Uh, but there's multiple ways that you could make three different kind of graphs if you're doing an above, below, or in the middle but you might not need to have all that detail in order to get the benefits of a pictorial representation of the data.